folks good morning good morning welcome along to the vlog so today what we're doing is attaching the rest of the components to the stand mainly all the pipe work essentially we've got most of it done I've done a few bits and bobs as well today but at the moment I'm in the process of making a spar jar so I know a lot of people I know a lot of people are interested in the spar jar. This is my first take on it. And this is actually not exactly gonna work out because I can't shorten this distance here. It's too far out into the pot. So we're gonna go with another idea, which is this little fellow, just a little S, snaky S bend. Uh, but the idea behind this is we're gonna, instead of placing a T on the end, we're gonna pop an elbow on there, and then on the bottom of that elbow, hopefully we'll be able to put the T. So provided that this gives me a better profile than this, then that's the one that we'll be going for. And for ease of release, what I've tried to do is use a compression fitting and an olive which has essentially been forced quite tightly, I might add. Let's see if I can get this out now. Oh my goodness. It will come, I'm sure. Yes, maybe not this week. Come on, lad. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's gone in probably, there's the thickness of my finger, half an inch. And then if we just clamp down this nut and olive on it, we should be able, be able to hold that in there. But that's that one. So let's see how we'd get on with this one. Well, quite conveniently, it's slotted in. And then we'll be engaging it on the side there. And I think that is something we could work with. We could pop the elbow on here could also shorten this little stem just a touch it's a little bit long so maybe we could just shorten that section there just a tad come on catch up young man catch up there he goes because obviously there's all that distance that I'm not taking advantage of so if we could get that to go all the way home on the inside then you know we're on a winner so that's going to be essentially the sparge arm holder. So the next job I'm going to have to do is take some of this copper pipe and we're going to have to make the sparge arm itself. So I'm going to go and drill some holes in this piece of pipe and we'll come back to this once we know where we want to be because we need this piece first to give us kind of the radii, the radius of the pot. So we get a nice even spread whilst the arm is rotating. So I'm just gonna nip over to the drill press and we'll put some holes in this piece of pipe. Yeah, don't laugh, don't laugh. I know, a couple of, uh couple of no-goers there I think one two three four five six so instead I've decided to punt for this system so we've got the cam lock on there like that and then an assembly of pipe work like that, I just need to cut this section down now and then that should be, should be all we need. It's just a little bit long so it's getting stuck at the minute. So I've just made some minor adjustments and there we go. That's your sparge arm assembly. So in order for these John Guest fittings to rotate, what you have to do is take them apart. Just a case of unscrewing this top cap like so, and inside you'll see a grey plastic washer. The uh, 
the push fit section with the little grippy bits of metal on and in the bottom there's an o-ring and you want to remove that o-ring because that's what prevents it from rotating as freely and then kind of assemble it all back together again making sure that that grey washer's lined up in the middle like so and then just put it back on and there we go so that once we drill some holes into it and fire some water through should be free enough to rotate and sparge the grain of course because I couldn't get this bend right though we are now limited to not being able to have more than about 60 65 liters of liquid in the mash tun so if that was to happen then I guess all I'd have to do is just uh, put some tin foil on top and just sparge with the hose the old-fashioned way not a big deal so I brought the extension across and I'm going to borrow a few hoses from the main kit and we're going to just give this whirlpool arm a bit of a test not whirlpool arm this uh, this sparge arm so there we go we're hooked up we have some water in the system for the first time now let's have a look then so here we go we'll get this hose pipe out of the way and I'm about to plug in the pump so here we go there we go just a bit of an airlock issue here but I think that's resolved itself now let's have a look oh that's more like it so there we go I'm just going to kink the pipe we'll connect it up and take two there we go so reposition the arms so by the looks of it this top one we may be better off putting the gasket into one of these because we're losing quite a lot of water down the middle let's see what happens if we slow the flow down quite a bit so I'm just tweaking this valve over here in my hand to try and throttle back the flow because it's quite vigorous here we go, we're beginning to sit slow. I'm just unhooking the tripod leg so we can get a better shot. Yeah, so that that angle, that that angle. And yeah, looking at that, I do think we want to just have One of these o-rings back on so i'm going to go ahead and just do that in a second and uh, we'll give it another go right well i tried it with the o-ring and it didn't really reduce the uh the amount of water flowing out of here but what i did do was just push this little ring section here down a touch just I can focus on it there's a little ring there like this bit here so basically I pulled that out and pushed the pipe in a little bit more and that seemed to just obviously, I'm guessing, close the gap. It's closed the gap between the pipe and the top of that, which has allowed me to really slow it down because I just thought the speed of the sparge would have been too fast and you'd have got a stuck sparge and you want to be able to throttle it right down. So we've not got too much liquid bailing in there but of course it still continues to rotate and I reckon we've kind of found a bit of a happy medium there, what do you think? It's not far away, probably we'll see time will tell, trial and error but I think that is a good start if nothing else so while we're at it I thought I might as well check a few other things 
So the lid doesn't fit onto the HLT with it, with the sparge arm in its uh, functioning position. But if I just rotate that little S bend, then it sits nicely below the the lid. And of course, we can sparge even like less quantities of grain and what have you by lowering it like that. So what I've gone and done now, so we can move on to the next port of call, is uh, I've hooked up the pump to the Whirlpool arm. So we'll just open that and we'll transfer that test water out of the mash tun into the boiler. So there you can see that's the Whirlpool arm in operation. So this is just a piece of one inch stainless steel tubing with half nipples, half sockets welded on each end and then a couple of street elbows and at the bottom a half inch to quarter inch BSP reducer to provide that a jet if you will so we can angle that I suppose if it was smaller we'd have a bit more of a powerful jet as well looking at that but that's good enough for now and there we go so that seems to me like that's all the water out the out the mash tub right folks what I've done is I've filled up the uh, boil kettle this time to about 20 litres so that that float switch is engaged which means that at this stage the elements would be able to be powered up and also we have the takeoff tube for the uh, trub down there so the water needs to be higher than that to get out of this particular valve so what we've done is uh, put this pipe on here which goes into the top of our sight glass and filter assembly looking at this I might put a 90 on here just to tidy this hose up a little bit it's a bit high and then um, we've got two of the uh, filter housing valves open and you'll notice as well that I've also put a little uh, tab on the filter so hopefully there we go we can undo these by hand now as opposed to getting a spanner out every time and then it goes into the main pump body itself and then back out and up into the whirlpool port so I'm just going to close one of the valves on there so it doesn't spoil the show we'll open the whirlpool port because we've seen that happen already and then hopefully when I open this we'll see liquid flow down that main pipe and into the sight glass and there we go, bouncing a little bit on an airlock, which is bound to happen with these really long hoses. But one way of getting rid of that is just to turn the pump off for a second, let everything come to equilibrium. There we go. Okay, so I just paused there a moment because that was irritating me somewhat. So I've taken this off and I've swapped it out for an elbow. So now we shouldn't have too much of an issue with an airlock. We'll still have a little bit because the hoses are long, but when we install the proper sized ones, it won't be too much problem. Well, there we go. We can see already that we've got water flowing in to the pump. So that's fine. And then what we're gonna do, go and have a look on the inside. We do have water trickling out there on the Whirlpool side. So that's working. So all we need to do now is just kind of throttle it down on the outlet to try and get a bit more flow going and give those air bubbles time to just settle out. You can see when you close it, the air bubbles tend to just run up the hose. You might not see it on this discolored hose quite as well. And when you open it, there we go. They're free to come out. So I think we're going to get this to work, even though it's fighting me every step of the way. See, there's still quite a lot of air in the system there. So what we need to do is just get this purged and, uh, and then continue on our way. So good news, without really any assistance from me, uh, naturally these air bubbles have just been sort of letting go 
of the steel here and flying down the sight glass and ultimately into the pump and around so we've almost got rid just one or two little air bubbles there hanging on if you can see that I think they will disappear with a light tap maybe or maybe if I open the other side of the uh, system now we can see he's just he's still hanging on isn't he anyway I'm getting distracted by an air bubble let's go and have a look at the pace of the whirlpool ah yes there we are that's much more like it I think that will get a good flow going I can see that obviously it's battling the obstructions such as the elements and the flow switch but once we've got some more liquor in that tank I think that will be sufficient flow to induce oh yeah without a doubt there's some power coming out over there so yeah I'm happy with that right oh there we go so we've made more progress today not a huge amount but we're getting closer every day so we've got a spar jam we've got water flowing through the filtration system and we've got all of the pipe work attached that is hard piping obviously I don't include the silicon piping for that so the next job which will be tomorrow no doubt is to install the plate chiller into the system and begin to cut hoses the silicon hose and get all of that in place so that we're ready to well give her a caustic brew and then all we're waiting for still unfortunately is the heat sink for the control panel and a few of these but they will come soon enough I'm sure so that's it folks I'm gonna wrap this one up and we'll be back at it tomorrow if you fancy tuning in I'm sure you do we'll see you then cheers <laughs>